Thank you, everyone, for coming. And welcome to our <laughs> final presentation of this masterclass. Uh, today, we are going to talk a little bit about risk management and trade management, as we believe this is one of the most important topics uh, in order for you to become successful. Uh, Pascal won't be joining us because he is having some uh, health issues, or in other words, he's sick. So he left us alone today to present you about this very important topic. I am sure he wanted to say a lot of things, uh, but if you have any questions for him, you can always contact him. Uh, now first, uh, just a few words you already know about our sponsors. Uh, one of them is Admiral Markets. They're a broker. Uh, they have uh, multiple offices around the world, uh, which is good, especially the ones that are outside of Europe, because uh, you're able to use the full advantage of leverage trading, uh, regarding which value we will explain in a bit. And uh, also they have uh, tons of, uh, how to say, instruments uh, which you can trade. And our other sponsor is Jarvis. Uh, actually, they're having a pre-sale now of their tokens. Uh, you can go to their website if you're interested in that uh, type of investments. Although the market, the cryptocurrency market was not great uh, so far this year, but uh, we believe in the projects, not in the cryptocurrencies itself. And uh, last but not least, I want to say uh, that we are doing a Christmas giveaway uh, yeah, we look dope, right? Uh, we are doing a Christmas giveaway. Uh, we've decided to uh, give everyone the chance to receive our newsletter, which is usually a paid subscription. Uh, you will receive a monthly newsletter, both for Forex and uh, Valentin's newsletter, which is for commodities and indexes. And we've added live signals to that newsletter, which will be received in the Telegram channel, uh, specially designed for that. Uh, you can sign up for uh, that Christmas give giveaway uh, through Facebook. You can find um, a, a link there for oh, a landing post. There, there is a post. Yeah, a post with a link for a landing page where you can leave your email and sign up. Uh, I also wanted to add here that uh, this newsletter will start from the 7th of January and will uh, end at the beginning of February. If you have any questions, you can always contact us regarding that. I think Seva wants to say something. An important thing is uh, you don't need, we don't need your credit card information or anything, just your email when you sign up. So, you know, no automatic, you know, prolonging for the paid membership or whatever. So it's completely free for one month, especially for you guys. Yeah, and uh, this doesn't mean you have to continue subscribing after that. It's just something to help you uh, grow as a trader because you can learn a lot of things. I mean, we do analysis and we give uh, tips in that, those newsletters and sort of small lessons, uh, so to say. Uh, so yeah, as Seva said, you can just leave your email and subscribe. You can always unsubscribe so you don't receive any uh, emails from us in the future. And also, I just want to add here uh, because I am usually supposed to add that thing. Uh, those signals and uh, trading plans are just advices, so we don't, uh, I mean, if you, uh, trading is usually connected with losses and can be connected with substantial losses, so uh, if you take any risks, it's on you. Uh, DM trading is not responsible. As, as, as I said, I have to say it. Uh, so we can continue. Uh, Yes, sir. In, in simple words, what Vali just said, if you fuck up, it's on you guys. So, uh, the five weeks plan has come to an end today. Uh, on the first presentation, just a quick recap. On the first presentation, we talked about what is trading. Uh, basically, uh, the most important thing we talked about is the psychology behind trading and how to prepare your trading mindset. Uh, we think this is really important for you in order to uh, start understanding the market and uh, leaving emotions out of that. On the second one, we uh, went a bit further with uh, some uh, technical analysis. We talked about different formations and uh, how to build a trading plan and a routine. Of course, this is uh, another important thing you have to remember. You always have to 
you need to have a routine in order to be successful. On the third one, uh, we discussed a bit indicators. It's uh, a bit boring subject, but uh, it is necessary for you to know about it, and uh, maybe you are using some indicators or some uh, type of patterns. They can both influence, uh, have positive or negative influence on, on your trading, so use them carefully. And on last presentations, for those of you who weren't here, uh, we talked about how uh, each and every one of us prepares their trading day. And uh, we did a live trading session. Actually, Pascal did it. Later on, uh, we did it on YouTube as a live webinar, uh, which will be uploaded uh, most likely after New Year because we have to cut some things. We had some difficulties, uh, technical issues. Uh, so you can rewatch it. It was around, I think, two hours, two and a half hours or something like that. Yeah, but if we cut it, it will be around an around, uh, hour and a half. So. It's yeah, doable. we took some good trades there, although on M1 time frame, but still uh, profitable ones. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, one of the mo most important topics in trading, risk management and trade management. Uh, even if you don't understand how to enter on the market, how to make your plan, if you are great at risk management and trade management, you can still be profitable. Although not that much, you need all of the things in order to maximize your profits. But still, this is one of the most important topics for me at least. So now Value will tell you uh, about what is risk management. Uh, he'll talk about leverage, margin, and all those fancy words. Yeah, hey guys. So the first thing that I'm going to start is uh, the margin. Uh, I'm not going to bore you uh, to bore you to death with it because it's not that important, but it's uh, important to know that uh, there is uh, two types of margin in your bank account, locked and free margin. Here about the risk management, it's uh, very important to know that uh, you don't have to uh, open uh, positions that uh, you just wanted to do, but uh, you have to think that uh, they will be they will bring you profit because otherwise you just uh, locked your margin and uh, they're just uh, doing nothing and you have uh, no possibility and opportunity to extract profits from this. Uh, of course, your free margin, uh, you always have to have it and to leave sim some because uh, in most of the cases, uh, some of the trades are not always going in the right direction, at least immediately. So it's very important to have some free margin in order to have some, uh, to get some mm, initial losses. And uh, then when the trade started to go on the right direction, to have the opportunity to, to, uh, to manage it in the, to, into the best way and then to hopefully extract some profit. So, of course, uh, I'm going to continue with the leverage. Well, a lot of people are telling that uh, uh, it's a bad thing, but uh, one of the actually things that we are thinking in our company is that it actually is your friend because with it you're able to trade securities and stuff that you're not going to be able to trade uh, if you don't have enough uh, money to deposit, because sometimes uh, people have uh, the money to deposit, let's say $500, $1,000, which uh, is not possible for you to, with uh, this amount, it's not possible for you to trade uh, stocks like Apple or expensive indexes uh, like, let's say, NASDAQ or maybe even Dow Jones. But with the leverage, it's uh, very uh, easy to do. I'm going to show you how. Well, basically, for example, the most common one is uh, 1 to 100. So if you have one dollar, it's becoming a hundred, then a thousand, and a hundred dollars, ten thousand. So in this way, when you deposit your money, you have the opportunity to trade uh, stuff that you're uh, not able to do in just with a cash account. Basically, this is the main difference between cash account and uh, a margin account. Um, here, what you can, uh, what you should know is that uh, into the cash account, basically there is no opportunity for you to receive a margin call. But here you can, because uh, when you deposit some money and you're going on some losses, 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 and then in the end, just the broker will call you and say, hey, we want to deposit more money, or we just <laughs> close your account. Uh, in the cash account, this is not possible. You just have some uh, shares. If they drop down, you're just going to uh, extract less money from them. But there is no way for a margin call. But uh, that's a very rare occasion. So most of the people are trading on margin account. So... I guess it's a good idea for you to, to have it and to use it because it's actually you can extract uh, uh, good opportunities from it. 
The next thing that I want to uh, discuss with you is about uh, the uh, trend and uh, how it's uh, changing our investment. We said it a couple of times before that it's uh, very important to know about the risk management that uh, if you're starting to invest into the beginning of the trend or into the end of the trend. So here just uh, you have to remember that into the beginning you can uh, easily invest some uh, major uh, amount of your bankroll but into the end you have to be more careful because there is less probability for the trade to be profitable so basically you need to be careful and invest less from your bankroll uh, yeah so the end of the trend it's very important to know that uh, there is the highest probability for the your trade to become a losing one so you have to be very very careful with your uh, trading plan and especially with your stop loss whenever you put it you just have to follow it and don't move it because this could uh, cause you some very very uh, unwanted losses the next thing that i'm going to discuss with you is about the risk reward actually uh, do you want to add something about the previous uh, topic if you uh, <clears throat> i just want to add to the leverage uh, part one more yeah uh, about the advantage and disadvantage of leverage so uh, value already told you the advantage of it you can uh, trade a lot bigger size on the market with a lot less investment but uh, there are a lot of disadvantages of leverage which uh, uh, he also mentioned about the margin call about uh, losing a lot more real quick so I just wanted to tell you that try not to exploit uh, leverage too much, uh, meaning that don't uh, rush things. You cannot rush things on the market. I understand that, uh, I don't know actually, I don't know you all, but usually people uh, are less likely to invest some huge amounts on trading. And uh, the best bankroll to start with is uh, 10,000 which not everyone can afford to invest or some people are scared to or it doesn't matter the idea is that uh, most of us including me including Valu, we are start starting with a lot smaller accounts and we are trying to exploit the leverage so uh, you cannot do that now in europe uh, because of the esma regulations but if your broker offers you um, to open a, an account outside of Europe, you can use leverage from one, uh, from one to 10 to one to 500, which is a I huge leverage. At, at the moment, the one to 500 is very rare, but you can reach one to 400 for sure. But uh, 500 is a very occasion. Anymore. Yeah, I, one to 400, okay. Uh, this is huge. I mean, uh, if you're using that type of leverage, I think uh, you just, need to lose 25 pips in order to lose the whole investment of course you can place your stop loss way higher but you lose a lot more money and 25 pips are a very small um, how to say Movement? surface yeah very small surface on the market and you should always we are going to talk about that in trade management but you should always leave some breathing space for the price uh, to move even against you for a while then to move back down and with 25 pips this is really really hard unless you are day trading or scalping so depending on your strategy uh, use a leverage that will best suit it if you are trading the h4 or daily time frame or weekly or higher time frames I don't recommend using one to 400 because you need to leave a lot more uh, space for the price to breathe. Of course, if you're trading M1, you can go with one to 400 because your stop loss usually there is like 10 pips, 15 pips, something like that. So you're fine with that. But at, uh, choose the leverage that best suits uh, your way of trading and you can always start at the beginning with a higher leverage. So for example, one to 200, I wouldn't go higher. Unless again, if you are scalping. Uh, one to 200 and then while you gradually, gradually build your bankroll, uh, you can lower uh, the leverage. And that's what yeah, I wanted here to add here. I just uh, wanted to mention as well about uh, closing a position for protection. Uh, sometimes, depending from the strategy that you're using, but uh, when you leave uh, space for the trade to breathe, as uh, Ilian said, 
uh, sometimes it's going against you and all the news are always uh, also showing that you're wrong. So it's not necessary for you to wait until uh, the price to hit your stop loss. When you see that probably you're wrong, you uh, just close it before this in order to minimize your losses. Sometimes this is very important because uh, as I'm going to speak now for the uh, risk reward ratio, three to one, uh, this is actually uh, is a hidden way to uh, increase it because when you mon minimize your losses, uh, as much as you, you can and as much as possible, this is giving you the opportunity to leave uh, free money and actually to leave free exposure for you for your other trades, uh, profitable trades to growth. So about the risk reward ratio. So what's the, multi, the most important? Well, the calculation is uh, basically for uh, every dollar that you lose or you're probably going to lose if uh, the position is uh, not uh, and developing well, you need to have the opportunity to win another three. So in basic way, you have to put uh, and to enter uh, into the markets in a way that uh, when you put your stop loss, it's on a certain level and the development of your position can give you uh, triple the size of your losses. Uh, this is the most common uh, uh, usage of this tactic. Of course, as uh, Pascal said to you last time, there is another uh, possibility. There are traders that are trading with uh, uh, strategy that uh, gives him the opportunity that uh, they're very um, it's more more probable to win so they have uh, the ratio is calling BAT BAT so the b when you have a higher BAT ratio this is giving you the opportunity to trade with uh, even uh, risk reward ratio one to one but uh, most of your trades are gonna be unprofitable anyway so in this way you're protected uh, I'm not gonna speak for the BAT ratio right now because it's uh, calculating very hard and I think you're not going to be interested in it, but if you want, you can always uh, check it in uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, but uh, in the internet, uh, because uh, most of the platforms actually are showing it to you anyway, like as a ready number. Uh, the next thing is uh, the usage. I already br briefly mentioned to you this, but uh, when you uh, open the trade, you need to know that uh, sometimes from the uh, position that you're entering, uh, you could, uh, of course, uh, go on a loss, on like a realized loss, not due to that you're making a mistake, but sometimes it's a bad luck. So you need to follow it strict. And uh, for example, when you have, let's say, 10 trades, and let's say 60% of them are wrong, if you're risking one door and you have to win three, the calculation is uh, very simple. You're just uh, going to lose uh, $6, but the other four trades are going to realize $12 for you. So basically, if you're uh, following this tactic, uh, even if you're 60 or 70 percent wrong, the other uh, trades will realize you enough profit in order for you to be profitable. Uh, the percentage versus pips. This is very important because uh, not every trade needs to be with the same exposure as the other one. Uh, even if you're taking uh, two uh, identical moves, sometimes, uh, this is actually an example that uh, Ilian can give you. It happens on his uh, last uh, newsletter. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, the trades are with a uh, different uh, probability to be profitable. So when you go on uh, on one of them with 10% investment on your bank roll, but the other one with 1%, let's say, uh, the most profitable, the most probable one to be profitable, we bring you enough profit to cover the other one. And in this way, you're protected because uh, with the riskier one, you can of course realize some profit. But if you, because it's most most probable to lose, you're gonna lose less than what you win. This is also a way to increase your uh, risk management, to make it better, and to maximize your profit. The, here, if you want, you can actually uh, mention your example about your previous uh, newsletter, what actually happens. Because uh. so when you do it in uh, pips, uh, the movement is one and the same. Uh, it looks like you're losing the same uh, amount of money, but it's actually different because you can play with the exposure. So yeah, I, I cannot hear for the percentage and uh, pips that uh, a lot of companies or traders that offer you something, for example, Sinos or uh, trading strategies, doesn't matter if they want to sell it to you or it's free, they show you their result in pips. But in many cases, the result in pips might not be the same as result in percentage. And uh, to be honest, the percentage is way more important than pips. Uh, because more accurate, actually. Mm -hmm? More accurate for the trading performance. Yeah, yeah, because in pips, you can be in profit, but still 
be a loser on, in percentage, which means that your bankroll has gone down, so you lost money. And we are doing this trading in order to make money, not lose one, money, not just to make some pips. Uh, the idea is that last week on the uh, monthly newsletter, which I sent to clients, uh, we finished the week on a minus 36 or 27 pips, as far as I remember. I'm not exactly 27, as far as I remember. 27. Yeah, 27 pips, minus 27 pips, yeah. But actually finished the week on plus 1.8% or something like that, 1.4, um, somewhere there. So it, there was a difference. We lost in pips, but after all, we added 1.4 or 8 percent to our bankroll. So, of course, this really depends uh, with what investment you take your trades, because that 1 percent can be uh, 10 percent or 100 percent even, depending how much you risk. But uh, I tend to risk, or at least to send to clients, uh, a risk no more than. Uh, one percent in some cases two or three depending on the trade but overall the average risk uh, last week was around one maybe 1 1.2 uh, which is extremely low risk of course you can take those positions instead of one percent with five percent with ten percent uh, it's up to you so to say but it's a lot more riskier because if you're in a losing streak, streak instead of losing just one percent you'll lose 10 and 10 are a lot harder to gain up after that but the point is that don't always watch uh, someone posting hey we made for example 500 pips last week that's not a big deal i mean it's not something small 500 pips in in a week is pretty good but at the same time if in percentage he, uh, that guy or uh, company or whatever is on minus, it doesn't matter even if he makes 10,000 pips for a week. So yeah, here it's uh, what you need to know. That's with the uh, correct trade management and uh, risk management. Even if you're losing, uh, if you're losing on pips, uh, you can still protect your bankroll and uh, get uh, at least in zero as a percentage that you lose from actually bankroll. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some examples. This is what actually looks like. Uh, here is a blue rectangle. I don't know if you can uh, see it, but uh, just to mention that there is a blue rectangle. So this is, let's say, a position that you uh, want to open. Here is the place that you want to entry. This is uh, the, like uh, you're waiting for your sign -out. Uh This place here is uh, need to be uh, three, uh, like, uh, okay, actually, I'm going to say it uh, the other way around. This place here needs to be three times bigger than this one. So basically, this is what gives you the uh, three to one win to lose ratio. So uh, this is uh, how you should position yourself on the market, and this is what you should uh, look for uh, risk management. You can do it the same way on the short side. Of course, uh, again, here is uh, the place that you want to entry. So this uh, uh, place here should be three times the movement here, because otherwise you're risking uh, too much, and uh, if you're going into a losing streak, this could cause you a lot of losses, which can actually close your bank account or bankroll or whatever it is. And uh, it's uh, okay, you yeah. here. I just want to add uh, to the trade journal is at the end of the presentation. <laughs> uh, I just want to add here that uh, I both disagree and agree with value regarding that um, rule, so to say. A lot of people uh, tell you to look for one to three, so risk 1%, win 3%. Uh, I agree with that because in the long term, you can be profitable that way. But in many cases, it is extremely hard to get 3% with one trade out of the market, at least from what I've seen. Of course, it depends on uh, what time frame you trade, since he trades on a higher time frame on the daily, it's a bit more, I mean, this, uh, this approach, I think it's best uh, to be used on higher time frames. Yeah, it's more applicable for higher time frames. Yeah, because on the lower time frames, you have uh, a lot of moves. It's a lot harder to make one, uh, one to three. So the most important thing is just to uh, manage your trade properly and finish in profit. That's all, even if you do a one-to-one -one positions every time. I mean, if you can do one to three, 
or one to five. I actually had a demo account with one to fifty-five position. But uh, you know those things uh, happen. It's never rarely. gonna stop, like never. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it was a demo account. <laughs> so yeah, I had a position with a hundred euro that made five five thousand five hundred. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, one to fifty-five. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, but it was actually a trade that was taken on daily or weekly. So, I mean, on those time frames, it's a little bit more possible to do it than on the lower time frames. However, the idea is to manage your trade properly. Doesn't matter if you make one to three. Of course, if you can, perfect. If you can more, even better. But the idea is to be at profit at the end. That's all. Yeah, just don't risk more than you can actually uh, win from this trade because this is actually a bad strategy. And maybe we should add here in risk management uh, not to risk money you cannot afford to lose. Uh, meaning that, for example, if your uh, life, so to say, costs you 1,000 euro per month and you are making, let's say, 1,200 euro from your job or uh, whatever you're doing, you can use those 200 euro and you can just spend them on trading every month. If you are good, uh, at some point, you build those 200 euro into 400, into 600, into and so on and so on. Uh, actually, Pascal started uh, kind of like that. He had a few bankrolls, uh, which he lost, goes. small ones, but he just kept investing and uh, trying. Uh, and learning, of course, which is the most important thing. And at one point, he just became profitable. Uh, but the idea is to not invest, let's say, 500 euro of those 1,200, because that way you feel stressed, you feel pressured by the market. You think, uh, okay, I need that money, I cannot afford to lose them. And every pip uh, that, for example, your position goes against you, you'll be either closing it or screaming or, you know, panicking, uh, which is not good because you cannot make uh, proper good decision. dis proper decisions in situations like that. So never risk more than you can lose. Moving on to the trade management. Um, here on the right, you can see I created uh, sort of a cycle. Of course, there are a lot of other things you need to know and use. But for me, uh, this is trading. You need to create a trading plan. Uh, this includes all the things you learned on our uh, second and third presentation. Then you need to define your risk, which you uh, learned just now from value, how to define your risk, uh, where to risk more, uh, because I'll just go back here uh, real quick. Because you cannot risk uh, the same amount here as you risked here. If you open a buy position here with 1%, then here you should be going with 0.1% or something like that. Of course, that depends. You have to make your cal own calculations depending on how much you can afford losing and so on and so on. But the point is that, uh, as Valu said, the older the trend gets, uh, the less investment you should have. And I actually have an example for that. I'm going to show it in a bit in trade management. <clears throat> 